this is Britt Caswell with another video on factoring. Today I'm going to focus on a type of factoring that I call the double bubble, which is when the A value is equal to 1. What I mean by that is when I look at standard form of a quadratic, which is AX squared plus BX plus C, I'm talking about the number in front of X squared just being a 1. Now remember, a lot of times in algebra we don't actually write the 1 in there, so there's an imaginary 1 floating in front of all of these x squareds. Now another important thing is if you see this in an equation, meaning that there's an equal sign, we usually want that equation to be equal to 0. So just double check and make sure that all of our stuff has an equation equal to 0, or is just an expression like you see here. So when we're dealing with quadratics, we want to make sure that it's also written in that standard form to where the exponents are counting down. So notice that this is going x squared, and then x, and then a constant. That is very important when we're factoring, because if you don't have it in that form where it counts down, you will get the wrong answer. Now there are four types of problems uh, when we are factoring with double bubble, and they all have to do with the signs. So if you notice, my first example has plus plus, and then there's a plus minus, a minus plus, and a minus minus. The positionality of those signs is actually very important when figuring out how to lay out your problem. So a lot of my discussion today will be discussing those signs and how those signs affect what goes in our parentheses. So I always start these problems with creating my double bubble, which is actually just two sets of parentheses that are being multiplied together. Now if we think back to multiplying together our polynomials, we look at what was called the box method. Now what we would do is we would write polynomials on the top and on the side of this box and we would multiply them together to create this final answer. And in this final answer, we get an x squared. And we have to think backwards a little bit. What multiplied together to make x squared? Well, many of you guys would think an x times an x. So when I go to create my double bubble, I'm going to fill in an x and an x here in the front. So the next thing I do is I look at the first sign. In this one, it's a plus. That first sign is going to fall just right into my first parenthesis. What that's saying is that whatever my bigger factor is of 15, which you'll see here in a little while, that bigger factor has to be something positive. Then I look at my second sign. Now this second sign is telling me what my C value is. So I know when I multiply this box together, I'm going to have a positive 15 here. And since my bigger factor has to be a positive, I have to think about what the other sign would be to make a positive 15. So in essence, if this is a plus here, my signs have to match. I have to have another positive value to make a positive 15. Otherwise, my box won't quite work. This next part is a part that many students actually struggle with a lot. I recommend making sure that you have a multiplication table handy if you're not strong with multiplying. What we're going to do is we're going to create a t table. Okay? On my left hand side, I'm going to find the factors of my c value. In this case, my c value is 15. So I will find all of the numbers that multiply together to make 15. There's 1 and 15 and then there's 3 and 5, and those should be all of my factors. On the right hand side of my table, I'm going to be looking at my b value. My b value is 8. And I look at that second sign to tell if I'm going to be adding the numbers, or if I need to subtract the numbers to create that b value. So because this second sign is a plus, that's telling me I'm going to need to find the factors that sum to make 8. So the factors that add up to make 8. So now I'm going to add my factors. So 1 plus 15 is 16, and 3 plus 5 
is 8. So the factors that sum to 8 are 3 and 5. Now it's not as important for this problem because both of my signs match, but we want to remember that this pink plus sign that I dropped down here is the sign of the bigger factor. So my 5 would go here and my 3 would go here. Now if you reversed them on this problem, that wouldn't necessarily matter because they both have plus signs. Really that rule only matters if you're going to have opposite signs, which you'll see in our next example. So to finish out my box problem, I know there's a 5 here and a 3 here. x times 5 is 5x. x times 3 is 3x. And if I collect my like terms, it takes me back to my original problem, so I know that I did it correctly. So now let's try the second example. So as always, I'm starting with my double bubble, my two sets of parentheses. Now remember when the parentheses are touching like this, they are multiplying together. In order to get an x squared, I'm going to fill in an x times an x. My first sign is again a plus sign. So that plus sign will fall right here for my bigger factor. My second sign is a minus sign. So in order to get a negative 72 here, I have to be multiplying a positive times a negative. So since I already have my positive, my second sign here will be a negative. And then I set up my t-table. So I want to find the factors of my c-value. So the factors of 72. And then I look at that second sign to tell if I'm going to find a sum or a difference. So because this is a minus, I'm going to find the ones that have a difference, meaning I'm subtracting, of my b-value. Now on this problem, they haven't written a number in front of x. So we want to imagine there's, there's an imaginary 1 just floating right there. So I'm looking for a difference of 1. Now 72 has a lot of factors. I could create quite the list. So I know that because I am subtracting these, I know that I'm going to want to start with numbers that are very close to each other. If I just start with 72 and 1, that's a difference of 71, and that's a really big number. So numbers like 1 and 2 might not be very helpful to me. So I might start a little further down the list at something like 6, for example. So 72 divided by 6 is 12, but 12 minus 6 is 6. It still isn't quite where I want to be, but it's certainly a lot closer than the 71. So then I think I'm going to just keep continue going with the sets of numbers. So after 6 is 7. 72 is not divisible by 7. But I do know that it's divisible by 8. 72 is 9 times 8. And 9 minus 8 is 1. So that here is my list of factors that I want because they subtract to make 1. Now remember, when we dropped this plus sign down, that is the sign of the bigger factor. So I want to put the 9 here and the 8 here. If I don't put the bigger factor there, it'll cause this number, this b value, to not be correct. Now remember, you can always check your work here by multiplying your polynomial back out and making sure it takes you back to the original. So now for this third example, set up my double bubble. I know that to get an x squared, I need an x times an x. My first sign here is a minus which falls down, so my bigger factor will be negative. My second sign here is a plus. So in order to get a positive 60 here, I need to make sure that my signs match. So since the first sign is a negative, my second sign must also be a negative. Then I go through and I create my t-table. So I'm trying to find the factors of my c-value, so the factors of 60. And then I look at my second sign to tell me whether I'm adding or subtracting. So because this is a plus, I'm trying to find the ones that sum or add to my b value, which is 17. This means that I'm looking for relatively small values. So if I started again at like 1 and 60, 1 plus 60 is 61, and that's way too big. 
I also know 2 and 30 and 3 and 20 are also too big. So you might start at something like 4. I know that 4 times 15 makes 60, but 4 plus 15 is 19. If I move on to 5, I know that 5 times 12 is 60. And then 5 plus 12 is 17. So that is the set of numbers that I want. Now again, when you have these double signs here, it doesn't matter which one you put first or second, but I try to keep in the habit of putting the bigger number first. So I'm going to put the 12 and then the 5. And then here for my fourth example, I set up my double bubble. To make an x squared, I know that I need an x and an x. My first sign is a negative, so that falls down into my first set of parentheses. My second sign is also a negative. So to create a negative 10 here, I need opposite signs. I already have a minus, so that means that my second sign will be a plus. Then I create my t-table. I know that I need my factors of c on the left-hand side, so I need my factors of 10. And then I look at my second sign. My second sign is a subtraction, so I'm looking for a difference, meaning I'm subtracting one from the other, of 3. Now 10 is really easy to factor. I know that I have 1 and 10, and I know I have 2 and 5, and that's all of the factors of 10. So 10 minus 1 is 9, so that set doesn't work. But 5 minus 2 is 3, so this is the set that I need. And because my signs are different, I need to make sure that the bigger factor, the 5, goes in first, and then my smaller factor. So that's it. Following those simple rules for double bubble, you should be able to factor anything that you encounter right here where you have a, a equal 1. Although, understand that there are some problems that are not factorable. So if you have a not factorable problem, you'll get to this table and you won't see anything that actually either adds or subtracts properly. So keep your eye out for those and we'll find out how to solve those later. Until next time.